My oh. name is Meline Campbell. Here, you can use this. And I'm from the University of the Free State. And I'm going to talk quickly about the our Mining Act, our social and labor plans, some literature, the type of research that we're doing, and then on livability. Um, in South Africa, we've got the situation where, where, the, the, where uh, the mining rights belongs to the to the government, while the land may belong to the local municipality or to the mining company or, or to uh, private individuals. And then you apply to the national government for a license for 30 years. But we've got a lot of, a lot of corruption and taking place. Together with your application, you submit a social and labor plan. It's to address economic growth in the area where you plan to mine, to promote empl employment, and to ensure that the companies contribute to social and economic development. In the literature, um, we saw a lot about the mining curse, the paradox of plenty, but we think what is apl applicable to South Africa is more the issues of governance. This one on how the resource wealth is governed. The flaws that we see in the narratives, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution to all. And in our situation, perhaps development is too rapid. Diversification is key. Those are the lessons that, we, that we've learned from the past. Um, this map of South Africa... The, um, that's where, where I am from. This is our region. We've got nine provinces. Our province is the free state. You find mining almost all over the country. A challenge is water. The more you move towards the, the, um, the, these parts, the lower the rainfall is. Our research was in um, Bosmasburg, where we did research on the open... Iron mines, we're doing research in Kimberley on the diamond mines where we are researching artisanal miners or informal miners that they have now been legalized. We also looked at, at yeah, in the northwest at um, mines there and then um, there to the north of Pretoria to the coal mines of Emelachleni. So looking at all iron, coal, and platinum, and more recently at the diamond mines, the challenges for the um, for the mine workers are mostly environmental challenges of uh, polluted air, of um, the water is not potable, of um, the, uh, on the open cast mines, uh, noise pollution, dust pollution. Method, um, the research methodology, we um, circulate about a thousand questionnaires amongst the residents of each of the small towns, the iron mine, the coal mine, and the manganese mines. And then more recently, we've got the, I've got a PhD student working on the, uh, the diamond mines in Kimberley. The findings, we still see the traditional boom town cycle in uh, South African towns. Um, the challenges to the local municipality is the inf insufficient bulk in infrastructure. They can't deliver services to all these people. They feel because of them, or it seems that because of the mine, we've got um, the, uh, the population is growing rapidly. And, the, and that uh, is a challenge. Um, when we spoke to the, to the business people, the challenges of the mines paying high salaries was that they can't find somebody to employ because everybody is, is measuring their, what they are paying with what they can get on the mines, but the mines can't accommodate everybody. 
The challenges of the intestinal miners was that they do not rehabilitate. Uh, rehabilitate. So in Kimberley, they, the artisanal miners formed a group and they entered into a formal agreement with a large mining company. So the mining company allowed them to to mine on their land and in um, ex the, the, the mining company still will do the rehabilitation. So um, we hope it will work out like that. But Kimberley is quite a strange town, a city. When you visit Kimberley, you'll see on a Saturday morning on the roundabouts, there are municipal officials in their municipal over overalls mining for diamonds. Livability. Yes, we have uh, our unemployment stands at 27,6, which is which is very high, and the mines provide decent salaries, employment, but under terrible conditions. Polluted environment, like I've said, the intestinal miners who do not rehabil uh, rehabilitate. Migration puts pressure on the local governments. Yeah, the president of the Mine Minerals Council recently, recently said that mining companies are not local governments, but when you talk to the community, the community is waiting for the mine to assist because that's what the mines have been doing in the past. When the local government does not have the, the money to buy a generator, the mine will, will chip in and the mine will buy the generator or fix the pipe or whatever is the challenge. In, in um, Postmasburg, we saw a collaboration, a tripartite agreement between the mine, the local government, and uh, academics. And it worked pretty well. And the, when we interviewed the residents, they all know about this Samba Committee, this tripartite agreement. And then um, we also asked, but what's the responsibility for to the citizens? Thank you.